Hey everybody, this is John for MTG Nexus coming at you with a top five modern decks for the beginning of June of 2022. This is about three or four weeks in the streets of New Capanna. As a friendly reminder, if you do like modern informative content, please consider subscribing to the channel, giving us a thumbs up, leaving a constructive comment down below. So I will say there hasn't been a lot of changes with the format. Uh, streets of New Capanna did, inter did introduce a few cards that might be modern playable, but none of them have had a particularly high impact on the format. As we'll see, a lot of the decks that were in this list are on last month's list, just to shuffle it around a little bit. First one is Honorable Mention. A deck that has continued to perform very, very well is Teamer Rhinos. This is a the Cascade sister deck of Living End. Only instead of trying to do Living End, it's trying to do Crashing Footfalls. It is very much a tempo mid-range deck that's trying to get the Rhinos down and close out the game from there. Gets around the casting cost issues of playing Cascade spells with things like Brazen Borrower, Bone Crusher Giant, Force of Negation, Fire Eyes, Dead Gone, and Fury. So this is very much a kind of teamer mid-range deck. And then, you know, you have the backup plan of playing the Adventure Creatures as well as Fury to kind of keep your opponent down. While it's not as powerful inherently as Living End, it's also a little bit less vulnerable to hate, <clears throat> as Living End obviously is vulnerable to the both the anti-cascade cards like Teferi and Chalice while also being vulnerable to the graveyard hate cards. Its primary game plan is not nearly as powerful as oftentimes one living end, especially in game number one, can end the game. Um, that said, it is a very flexible deck. It does get to play Blood Moon, which allows it to hate out some of the matchups problematic for it. Um, but still, not the most powerful deck in the format. Another deck we considered for an honorable mention is Burn, which is a deck that is near and dear to my heart, as when I was making more gameplay content, Burn was definitely the deck that I focused on. However, most of its results have been kind of in middling tournaments and not really in the modern challenges or preliminaries. So, kind of hard to say where Burn really ranks in the, me in the meta. You know, it's always a deck that's, you know, good at keeping things in check and has some decent matchups against some of the top decks, like it's okay against Jog, okay against Murktide, okay against, uh, you know, Living In, okay against um, the Rhinos deck here, but just hasn't been putting up the results that some of these decks on the actual list have been. So coming in at number five is Living End. Now this deck is a continually tier one performer. Um, it's the most powerful of the Cascade decks. You know, it was one of the decks that really suffered under Loris being unbanned with um, Grixis Death Shadow being a very difficult matchup, and it's really kind of flourished in the newer modern meta without the Luris Companion. That said, you know, this is one of those decks that much like a deck like Burn or Tron can be hated out whenever you want to hate it out. So its, it's position is always tenuous at the top of the format. If people are targeting, on, targeting it on a given weekend, you're going to find wins hard to come by. As oftentimes, this is kind of like the old Dredge decks where Game 1 tends to be a fairly easy matchup. Although, you know, there are some things like counter spells that can give it some issues. And in the post-board games, you know, if people come prepared, this is a deck that's not going to perform well. And if people are ill-prepared for it, it's going to continue to produce results. You know, that said, what's the deck's game plan? Cycling a bunch of creatures, get stuff in the graveyard, um, cast a bunch of, uh, or cycle a bunch of things, get stuff in the graveyard, then do your cascade stuff into a living end. You know, whether you want to play three or four living ends in the deck, etc. You know, that's there's another video that we did quite recently about the card selections in the deck. But overall, this is a very fine thing in the format. It's the best of the Cascade decks, although it is a little bit more vulnerable to hate, as we mentioned, as it has to fight through the Graveyard Hate and the Anti-Cascade Hate. So you can kind of get some, you know, caught in the crossfire there. People are trying to beat Rhinos and such. Also, you know, there aren't too many other graveyard decks in the format right now, other than, you know, you could argue Murktide has a little bit of graveyard synergy, so people sometimes play value creatures like Endurance or Scavenging Ooze to kind of fight those decks. Number four on our list is Four Color Elementals. This is a deck we also recently covered in a in-depth deck, deck guide. This is a bit, one of the more powerful decks in the format and, you know, is definitely and should be in the upper echelon of the format. One of the things kind of holding this down is, you know, you do really have two variants of this deck. You have the Elementals deck, you have the Four Color Control deck. Some people have opting to go switch back to the Four Color Control deck as, you know, they want access to counter spells and a little bit more interaction. Planeswalkers, as opposed to, you know, the Risen Reef Eldamari's Call package. That said, you know, the decks are very similar. They are 80 card Yorion packages. They're playing Omnath and all of the Solitudes and Furies. 
you know, they're playing Ren and Six, they're playing T Teferi Time Raveler. So, just to come, just comes down to, do you want to be more of a creature value mid-range deck, or do you want to be a, more of a controlling deck a little bit with counter spells and such? Um, this deck has still continued to perform fairly well, but not nearly in the numbers as they were at the beginning of last month. So, this deck has slid down a list, but still very powerful. And also have to keep in mind the four color control. If you combine the two, it would probably be a little bit higher up on this list. Number three on this week's list, we have Hammer Time. A deck that has continued to perform well, and while I thought was slid down the list a little bit this month, it did have that really good finish up on Sunday's challenge this past weekend. This is the aggro combo list of the format, really. It's kind of taken the place of the spiritual successor of decks like Death and Taxes, Inf uh, Infinity, Affinity, Infect, etc. Kind of all amalgamated into one thing. It's kind of a mono-white aggressive deck that has a combo to it of Colossus Hammer, along with Pure Steel Paladin and Sigarda's Aid to equip to a very large, arbitrarily large creature, beat your opponent down. Also has a little bit of card advantage on selection with things like Reality Chip and Esper Sentinel making your opponent's life a little bit miserable. And with the banning of Luris has adopted Caldera Complete as a kind of its over-the-top threat that makes Stoneforge Mystic a threat and must-kill threat in of itself. Really taxes your opponent's ability to answer key creatures and then has some protection elements with things like Spell Pierce, Giver of Ruins, and some other things. There are some uh, cards they play. I forget what thing it's called. Steel, sh not Steel Shaper's Gift. Um, there's a protection spell they use out of the sideboard in some of these versions. You'll see things like Mana Leak and such. So it's like kind of a light permission deck, like uh, in fact was, while also being having a fair game plan. So you know if you has a lot more creatures than in fact. So it's powerful, strong at what it does. Gets to play some hate cards like Lavinia against decks like you know. Amulet, Tron, etc. Also pretty good against Living End. So, you know, there's a lot of different things this deck can do. It's very flexible and continues to have very powerful results as it has a decent beatdown plan and a very good combo plan and really hasn't lost a beat since the loss of Luris. Number two, deck that continues to perform very well as well. This is Yogmoth Combo on the back of Demonic Tutor's performances as well as other people picking up a deck and realizing that while it is complicated, it is, you know, a creature combo deck that you can pick up and enjoy in the format. You know, it's a deck that's fairly resilient to uh, removal and such, which is one of the things that have held down some of the tribal, tribal decks like Merfolk and Humans that used to popularize a lot of these lists. Um, but overall, you know, this is a very powerful mid-range uh, green-black creature deck built around three Physician and with a nice backup plan across the Hunger Tide, while also having some decent beatdowns with Strangle Root Geist, Young Wolf, Geralt's Messenger, and having a very wide variety of toolbox effects you know, that you can access with Court of Calling and Eldritch Evolution. So oftentimes you can find an answer to whatever it wants. Uh, some versions have got, even picked up Plague Magus of the Moon for rougher matchups like Amulet and stuff, a deck that could go over the top of this. So this is a very powerful deck that continues to perform very well. Once again, much like Hammer Time, it kind of moved up the rankings a little bit based on recent performances by some of its notable pilots. And number one, not very particularly interesting, is Murktide. Um, you know, Murktide is one of the few decks that actually gained a new tool in Ledger Shredder. Um, this made the deck a little bit more resilient against graveyard hate pieces, gave it another threat. Um, this, is, this is something that allows you to select through your deck, much like Dragon Rage's Chandler. But unlike Dra Dragon Rage's Chandler and Murktide Region, it's not really reliant upon the graveyard. So, you know, this is just yet another tool that one of the more powerful and efficient decks in the format have continued to pick up on. And without, you know, a ton of competition from something like Grixis Death Shadow that was previously maybe kind of crowding this out as the top tempo deck of the format or top... Uh, aggro com or ag aggro control for deck of the format. Um, you know, this has kind of become the undisputed king of tempo in the format. Other than you know, you could argue that um, Team of Rhinos can kind of push it a little bit. But you know, you get to play Ragavan. It's one of the few decks left in the format to do that. Plays Dragon Rage's Chainler, plays Merktide Regent, and now gets another threat to pair with you know your spell pierces, your counter spells, your Archmage's Charms, and you know so your raw card selection with things like Consider and Expressive Iteration. This is one of those decks that just pretty much have answers to whatever it wants at, at the right time, um, and can really only lose if you can go really under it, like a deck like Burn, or potentially something like Hammer Time, which can play into it. 
or you know go over the top with things like four color elementals and stuff and when elementals and four color control are kind of on the dip there's very few things left to challenge this deck as it does have a pretty reasonable matchup against a lot of the other creature based decks in the format so you know still kind of your undisputed king of the format is is it murktide continues to have the best results and you know i wouldn't be terribly surprised if somewhere down the road this deck takes a hit much like you know blue red delver did in legacy but for now this is kind of the undisputed king of the modern format and looks to do so for the inner foreseeable future as a friendly reminder if you do like this kind of content please consider subscribing to the channel giving us a thumbs up and leaving a constructive comment down below and i hope to see you for the next video